Good morning, everyone. Normally, on a Sunday morning, we would be up in the Harbor House. We would be sharing some time together in Sunday school, but that's not the time we live in right now. Um, we're all struggling a little bit with the impacts on life with this coronavirus situation, and, and we can't be together in person, but we're together in spirit. And uh, we did, we, Mr. Luke and I talked, and we felt like we need to continue with Sunday school in some digital way, and we thought it would be a good thing to try to record a video, stick with the Gospel Project lesson, and and uh, get, bring you where we would be at normally this Sunday, but just bring it to your own home as opposed to bringing it together in the Harbor House. So um, we're going to do that. I encourage you um, in this time to sit down, not just with yourselves, but get, bring your parents in. This could be a time of, of, of sitting in the Word together. Um, with your parents, we're going to give you some questions at the end, and um, this could be a very um, joyous time together. So we would encourage you to take that with your parents yeah, absolutely. and uh, um, share in the scripture together, share in the joy of what God's going to reveal to us in this, and um, yeah, just spend that together. So, um, so we're going to ask them to pause now, right? Pause your video. In the description of this video, you'll find our scripture reading as well as the discussion questions. Pause this right now. Read, read your Bible. You can open to it. The, the verses are Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 38. So take a pause and read that, and then we'll dive in. Seriously, pause it. Just the pause button. Two All lines. Right. Thank you for pausing. Thank you for pausing. Um, so you've just read about Simeon and Anna uh, and Jesus coming, being circumcised, his parents bringing him in for purification. Uh, we need to remember we can't divorce this from the context of the Bible. We kind of are familiar with Jesus' birth, but I'm talking bigger context. When we think about bigger context, we need to know who it is or, or what Simeon and Anna were, were waiting for, and all of Israel, by extension, were waiting for. Uh, and so we, it takes us all the way back into Genesis, um, starting in the Garden of Eden when, when sin happened, but going forward, God made promises to, to Abraham, and then to Isaac, and then to Jacob, and then to Moses, and then to David. And so God has been making these promises, uh, faithfully walking with his people uh, for some time now, uh, and that is, that is the context in which Simeon and Anna find themselves. They are waiting for God's full, fullest revelation of himself uh, to be, to be uh, handed down to them. Uh, and we need to know that in, in the book of Isaiah, uh, particularly, as well as elsewhere throughout the prophets, the, uh, God promises that he will comfort his people, that he will... That he will uh, be a consolation to them, uh, and that he will ultimately bring them salvation. So this is the context in which we're waiting, uh, and Simeon and Anna, by extension, and all of Israel are waiting. Uh, and so it is that we see that Joseph and Mary are coming, uh, and they are perfectly obeying. Um, they're perfectly obeying the law of Moses as they bring, as they bring Jesus to the temple um, after his circumcision on the eighth day for purification. And we chose to shot this vid shoot this video in front of our own sanctuary just to give kind of context that this story is Mary and Joseph bringing Jesus to the temple and so um, in their obedience to bring him um, to follow the, the law of Moses we see these these two witnesses that that, that, that they come into you know, and to interact with and the first one is Simeon and what does scripture tell us about Simeon it says that Verse 25, he was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And it references in here um, um, three times the Holy Spirit was upon him, revealed to him by the Holy Spirit, moved by the Spirit. Um, Simeon was a man of faith, um, and he was waiting, um, waiting patiently um, for this promise that... Um, that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And we see that um, God fulfills that promise. God is faithful um, to the promise that he made, the promise that he made thousands of years ago. And it, it is, it's interesting, when you read 20, 29 through 32, Simeon's response to this 
this amazing thing to meet Jesus in the flesh. Um, his response is praising God, which that should always be our natural response um, to know Jesus, um, to love Jesus, to praise him is always our natural response. And you look at you look at this, when I read it, something struck me in my life that I thought I would share with you. His, his words are, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. Simeon's almost saying, I can die in peace now because God's promise has been fulfilled and I have met Jesus. I remember, so I'm going to hearken back to 1994, which predates, this. that doesn't predate you, does it? 94? Not quite. Not quite, quite. but close. I'm, I am. I admit, I'm wee baby. We. I'm the old, I'm the old, old dude in this, in this foray, but it's okay. 1994, I was a hockey fan living in upstate New York. New York Rangers win the Stanley Cup. They had, I don't think they had won one in a very long time. It may have been their first. I wasn't a Rangers fan. I'm not sure, but I do remember this. It was a seven game series, the end of game seven, when they win. There was a fan in the audience holding up a sign, a Rangers fan that said, now I can die in peace. And that always, that always sat with me um, to think how cool it is to have a sports team that you love win a championship, to win it all, that you put so much um, energy into rooting for a team. But we find our true peace in the same place that Simeon finds it here is that we find our peace in Jesus Christ. And so, um, just like Simeon, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all the people. Um, we see Jesus. We see Jesus all around us. We see Jesus in this scripture here that God breathed out for us. And I think it's it's an important reminder that, that um, we do seek peace and and in other places, but true peace, true peace is found in Jesus. And we see that um, in Simeon's response here, and it's such a strong reminder. Um, and to that point, his peace, uh, he, he is at peace because of the faithfulness that God has showed him. And as he's been trusting God in his faithfulness, uh, he is at peace because God has kept this promise. Um, so we, we, we get, a first row seat to seeing how Simeon um, has trusted God but also ha how God has been faithful so as we were pre preparing for this Greg uh, wanted to ask this question about um, God's faithfulness and we want it we want you all to discuss this as a family uh, among siblings um, where has God been, been faithful to you mm -hmm. um, did you want to add yeah to no I just way? I just think We realize sometimes that we are, we struggle in our obedience, yeah. that we are unfaithful, but God is still faithful to us through our, our disobedience, through our unfaithfulness. And so, so take a moment and think about that. Think about personally in your life, how has God been faithful to me? Um, and I think when you sit and think about that a little bit, um, that will draw you to a place of peace especially in the light of knowing that we are still sinful and we still fall short and we're still unfaithful in so many ways. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And that brings us to the, the second witness, Anna, which we really don't know a lot about her. We hear some stuff about when she got married, when her husband died, um, that she was a very old lady. Verse 37, second half says, she did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer day and night. This was who she was. She was a devout worshiper and lover of God um, and what's cool is to notice how you could just imagine Simeon coming up on Joseph and Mary and Jesus and rejoicing and just kind of overflowing to where he gets into this poetry and you it, it kind of seems like she was just like she just happened to see it she probably knew Simeon we don't know for sure but it's very likely that she saw sees this happening she's like Simeon for real is this the is this the guy um, is this the, the, the family? Is this the baby that you've been waiting for? Um, inevitably, Simeon would have probably said, yes, yes it is. Um, and then verse 38, and coming up at that very, very hour, she began to give thanks to God. So she gives thanks to God. She continues in her worship in a, in a very tangible, real way. But she doesn't just give thanks to God. It says, 
she speaks to him, and to speak of him being him being God to all who are waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem so she goes and and, and continues telling other people she's been devoutly worshiping praying fasting in the temple um, the good news of this redemption through Jesus comes and she doesn't keep it to herself her worship automatically naturally goes out in uh, as evangelism to other people where she can't help but uh, can't help but tell other people about that and it, it reminded me I was telling Greg this is we're kind of hashing this out one of my favorite theologians John Piper um, wrote a book about missions uh, and the opening line of the book is missions exists because worship doesn't uh, worship is is something that doesn't just take place here it did it, it doesn't just take place in our homes um, on Sunday mornings but it's something that should encapsulate every part of our life um, and there's a question in the in the in the description about that as well um, but just starting to wrap it up now um, we talked about we opened up kind of talking about the context of God being a faithful God making these promises and ultimately them culminating in this baby Jesus um, and that was going to be the glory of Israel. Simeon and Anna were both were both Israelites. They were both Jewish, and they were waiting. They'd been hearing about the promise of a Messiah, of a Savior, of this Comforter that would be coming to them. Uh, and they, with their own eyes, both very old, got to see that. Um, so it was. And that's talk, Simeon talks about that in verse thirty-two. He's a, uh, the end of verse 32, a glory to your people Israel. This was something that there would be great rejoicing in. Uh, and to that point, do we, do we greatly rejoice that we have Jesus? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, and, and that's the beautiful, beautiful part to spin it back to the beginning about, about God being faithful and being a promise keeper, that um, the promise of, of a Messiah of a savior was not just for the Jews it was for the Gentiles so that means the Jesus that we speak about the Jesus here that we see in scripture the Jesus that provides peace is is your Jesus and my Jesus our Jesus so mm -hmm. um, um, when we read this we should be reminded that that, um, that God loved the world he didn't just love the Jews and, and that that the, the Jesus that we read here was for you and me and that peace that he provides here um, to Simeon to Anna is the same peace that he provides to you and me yeah. so yeah. he's the same savior um, for us all and as you as as we kind of have wrapped up we've given you all some discussion questions to talk about and really really just thinking how, what is your response we see Simeon and Anna's responses and by the way they were probably the first people who saw Jesus for who he was after the shepherds this probably was before the wise men had visited so this is why we see in verse 33 his father and mother marveled at what he had said about him it's not like everybody knew who Jesus was at this point um, but we want we want to give you all a chance now as we wrap up to kind of think through some of these things. What is your response? How we, we see their response, but what is our response? Mm -hmm. what, what does this mean for us internally? Do we rejoice? But what does this mean for us as as um, we are called to action? What is what does this look like for us? Um, so that's kind of the the, yeah. the final thoughts you want to. Yeah, there's quite the, just. Take advantage of the questions in the in the description um, below the video. Um, go through those, think about those, um, talk about them with siblings or family, and um, um, just share in this time as we get ready to um, enter into worship on a Sunday morning. You uh, you maybe want to close us in prayer briefly, yeah. since we're getting ready to presumably this you watch this before 10 a.m. worship tomorrow or today. It's we're shooting this on Saturday, but working through the bugs, but. Uh, um, you want to close us in prayer yeah, briefly? Let's do thank that. you. Lord, we thank you for your, your faithfulness that we see um, throughout Israel's history, ultimately culminating in Jesus. We thank you that we've got witnesses like Simeon and Anna who, uh, who have the appropriate response, who, um, to your faithfulness, rejoice and worship uh, and can't help but share with other people of the joy um, and are truly brought uh, to peace because of, uh, because of Jesus. We thank you for that. We ask that you would work in similar ways within us, uh, that your Holy Spirit would be at work. Ask that you would prepare our hearts for worship um, coming up, uh, and that we'd be drawn um, 
ever more closely uh, through the Holy Spirit to worship and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all have a good guys. Have a blessed day. We miss y'all.